Till now, you have studied about the transport of water in short distances. Now, let us study today long distance of water in plants. Have you ever placed a twig bearing white flowers in colored water? What do you observe? You observe the flower becomes colored. What is the reason? Today, we are going to find out the reason for that. It is due to the process of translocation. Let us define translocation. It is the bulk movement of substances through vascular tissues in plants. Now let us see what is bulk movement. Bulk movement is the movement of substances in massy as a result of pressure differences between two points. Now let us see how the bulk transport takes place. It takes place through two vascular tissues, xylem and phloem. In the xylem, the transport takes place through roots and in the phloem from leaves. In the xylem, the transport of water and mineral is from xylem to the other aerial parts that include water, mineral salt, organic nitrogen and hormones. On the other hand, in case of phloem, the movement of water and minerals from leaves to other parts of the plant body and that includes inorganic and organic nutrients. Now let us see absorption of water and mineral solutes. How does it occur? It occurs to two pathways which are apoplast pathway and symplast pathway. Let us see the differences between the two pathways. In apoplast pathway, it consists of cell wall and intercellular spaces. On the other hand, in symplast, it consists of cytoplasm connected with plasmodes matter. In apoplast, water does not enter living cells. On the other hand, in symplast, it enters living cells. Apoplast, fast movement of water molecules. On the other hand, in symplast, there is some resistance. Apoplast pathway is not influenced by metabolic activity of root. On the other hand, in symplast pathway, it is influenced by the metabolic status of root. Now, the two pathways can be explained with the help of the following diagram. In the diagram, you can see the blue colored that represent apoplast and the other light color that represent the same plast. So in the apoplast the water moves outside the cell. On the other hand in symplast the water moves inside the cytoplasm. Now there is another important phenomena that we see in the plant is mycorrhiza. What does that mean? Myco means fungus and rhiza means root. There are certain fungus which are associated with the roots of the plant, especially the forest trees. The following diagram, it shows how the mycorrhiza helps in the absorption of water. The diagram shows the infection thread that invades the cell of the root. Now when we study the movement of water up the plant, there are two widely accepted theories. One is the root pressure theory and the other one is the transpiration pole theory. Let us study the first theory that is the root pressure theory. This involves positive pressure and the movement of the water molecule to small heights. Now this can be demonstrated by drop of solutions when the oozing out of soft stem plant when cut. It cannot explain the transport of water in the tall trees. Root pressure theory can be demonstrated by a simple experiment. Now what do you see in the diagram? In the figure you see a watered plant which has been connected with a manometer 
to measure pressure of axillaries from cut stems. And the adjacent diagram that shows the axillation that demonstrate root pressure. Now, let us study the effect of root pressure. Now, have you ever seen an astertium leaf early in the morning? You can see some drops of water. What is that process called? Yes, the process is called guttation. So, if we define the guttation as the exudation of watery drops from the edges of leaves and uninjured parts. Now, these leaves, they also contain some pores, but they are definitely different from stomata. What are they called? They are called hydrothodes. Look into the picture, you can see the structure of hydrothodes. The hydrothod, it contains a cuticle covered with the sheath and an epithem which contains loose cells, a water cavity inside that is continuous with the xylem and at the upper part you can see the stoma. So, the water exudes out of the hydrothod early in the morning. Now, let us study the other theory and that is the transpiration pole theory. It was proposed by Dixon and Jolly in 1894. Transpiration creates a pull over water column which is lifted upward like a rope and is not broken due to presence of strong cohesion force amongst the molecules. Under transpiration pull theory, there is ascent of sap that is the movement of material and waters. Now, let us study what are the physical properties of water that is responsible for the transpiration pool theory. There are three important properties. The first property is cohesion, which is mutual attraction between water molecules. The second property is adhesion, that is attraction between water molecules to polar surfaces. And the third surface tension, the water molecules are attracted to each other in the liquid phase. So, now these three properties cohesion, adhesion and surface tension, how does these property affect the process? So, the two important effects are there. Number one, high tensile strength, it is ability to resist a pulling force and second, high capillarity, this ability to rise in thin tubes, example in this case the tubes and vessel elements. Now, before we going into the detail of the transpiration pool theory, it is necessary to have a look into the internal structure of leaf. You can see in that following diagram, the leaf having an upper epidermis palisade, mesophyll, spongiophyll and the lower stomata, which help in the exchange of gases, carbon dioxide and oxygen. The following diagram very well explain the transpiration pool theory. If you look into the picture, you can see the adsorption and correspondingly the transpiration. So, the transpiration, it helps in the absorption of water into root. In the diagram you can see the water absorbed by the root hairs and moving up into the mesophyll of the leaves. So, transpiration by leaves, it helps in the absorption of roots. There is another very important phenomena that you have studied in earlier classes also, that is transpiration. You can see the water in the form of water vapor lost from the surface of leaves through the stomata which is generally present in the underside of the leaves. To understand transpiration, let us have a look into the detailed structure of stomata. The stomata, we can see the two guard cells. Look into the picture and we see the microfibrils which help in the opening and closing of stomata. The opening and closing of stomata is due to change in turgidity of guard cells. 
A very important thing that we can observe in the stomata is the inner wall thick and elastic and the outer wall thin. When the turgidity increases, the outer thin walls bulge out and the cellulose microfibrils help in the opening of stomata. The following diagrams clearly explains the opening and closing of stomata. During opening of stomata, you can see the guard cell absorbs water, the pore opens and the stomata is opened. On the other hand, in the case of closing of stomata, the water oozes out and the guard cells become flaccid and the stomata closes. Now, a very important question might bother you that how water reaches leaf parenchyma cells. So it is through the evaporation of water through stomata which result in pulling water into leaf from xylem. Second, the low concentration of water vapor in atmosphere as compared to the substomital cavity causes water diffuses into the surrounding air. In the following diagram is very well explained how the water reaches the parenchyma cells. If we look into that diagram, you can see the soil water which enters into the root through root hair, there is osmosis cell to cell and then the water moves up to the xylem vessel in stem or root and finally to leaf enters into the palisade and there it is absorbed and used in the process of photosynthesis. And then we see the transpiration photosynthesis compromise. How the transpiration compromises photosynthesis? Look into the picture. You can see here carbon dioxide is taken inside by photosynthesis and water is given out by transpiration. Now let us see what is the importance of transpiration in plants. It creates transpiration pull for absorption. Second, it supplies water for photosynthesis. Third, transport minerals from soil. And the fourth, it maintains shape and structure of plant by keeping cells turgid. So now let us summarize the topic. The longest term transport of substances in plant takes place by the process of translocation. Second, there are two important pathways for the absorption of water. The one is apoplast pathway and the second one is symplast pathway. There are two important theories that we have learned today. One is the root pressure theory and the transpiration pull theory. And the last, the effect of transpiration in plants. Mm -hmm.